Hey there, my name's Deandra, and for starters, good job on making it through Christmas. Secondly, if you weren't aware, last week a bunch of content creators were on a call with the Overwatch devs and given news about stuff that's happening in future. However, everyone had to sign an NDA, so they can't really talk about it. Now, I was not asked to be involved with this, and that's okay. I didn't make this video to be salty, in fact, I think it gives me a lot more leniency on what I can actually do a video on. I basically just wanted to talk about the situation and then give some of my theories. So this thing with content creators exclusively gaining information has been very controversial. I realise that I need to be careful with my opinion here because there's no doubt it would be different if I had been included. I'm hoping to be involved in the future and I don't want to say something now that I then go back on. That being said, I'm not going to tell anyone they can't be upset here. I personally think a lot of the anger is the past catching up. What I mean by this is that lack of communication has always been one of the biggest criticisms with the Overwatch team since the very beginning. However, I don't want to say that it's entirely their fault, because it's obvious from this year that upper management and the company's work culture places a lot of strain and limitations on the devs. Stylos' Twitter thread about dealing with Blizzard's PR is a great example of this. Anyway, I feel like the response to this content creator thing would have been a lot different if we had been given more consistent updates about Overwatch 2 throughout the year. Let's pretend that in 2021, we got shown one visual hero redesign per month. Imagine that we got an extra dev conference and some little extras too, like a better timeline. After all that, it then comes out that content creators were given some extra knowledge. I'm not going to say that no one would be upset, but I do think there would be less negative feedback. Instead, we all just experienced a year that various content creators, many of whom were in the call, have referred to as the worst year in Overwatch history, yet we stuck with the game anyway. From what I've read, I get the impression that most people are angry because they feel like content creators pulled the ladder up behind them. Obviously, that is not anyone's intention, but I can understand why it may come across that way. Overwatch didn't give players much of a reason to stick around in 2021, so many just didn't, and if you did stay, you probably want to be rewarded in some way. I don't think the content creators in that dev call should make anyone feel like they can't be upset about this, because I guarantee you at least some part of that content creator would feel crummy if they weren't included. Now, they would also probably be very excited and happy for their peers, which is a good segue into the more positive stuff. Before I move on though, I do think it would be dense of me not to mention that some of the fan reaction has been pretty out of line. I saw some tweets by EVA and Warn that mentioned death threats, which is like obviously never okay, and then there's the theory about content creators being paid to make positive tweets. Okay, so personally, I don't believe that one bit. Half of Blizzard seems to just be on fire right now, and the thing is, influencers being paid to play games happens all the time, but if Blizzard was going to do that, I think they would do it closer to Overwatch 2's release date when the marketing really ramps up. They would target people like XQC or Tim the Tapman, not the folks that are going to play the game regardless. Anyway, the positive stuff. I think the biggest thing to keep in mind is that whatever was mentioned in the dev call is something we will eventually experience with these content creators, and apparently it's big enough to make gaming's biggest doomers excited. The fact that Samita came out of this glowing has to mean something, right? As I said, the devs not talking to us has always been an issue, and maybe one that's not in their control. If they've been able to take steps in the right direction, that is fantastic, no matter how small they are. After everything that's come out this year about the company, I have so much sympathy for those at Blizzard who are passionate about the games they make. If the choice is between no one hears anything and only a select few people hear things, I think we pick the latter every time, with no hesitation. I felt like fucking dog shit when I realised I wasn't asked to be involved, especially as someone who makes a living creating exclusively Overwatch content and is absolutely terrified of the future but a part of me is still really happy this happened. I want to know there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's also been really nice to see my peers get a super cool opportunity and come out hopeful. So yeah, it's okay to be upset as long as you don't take it out on content creators, but I think you should allow yourself to be cautiously optimistic as well. <laughs> with that out of the way, let's close this video off with some quick theories on what the news could have been. One thing to keep in mind is that a lot of stuff that's been made for Overwatch 2 probably can't be added to the live game because of engine differences. A lot of people will say things like, oh, they should just add new maps and new heroes, but that's almost certainly not feasible for Blizzard to do, so we'll keep that in mind. Okay, so my first one is a crackpot idea that I think has almost no chance of happening, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Picture this, Overwatch 2 is going back to 6v6, which has brought the release date closer. This theory is kind of ruled out when you consider that this call was mainly for content creators instead of OWL players, but god, can you imagine? I'm not even super against 5v5, I just don't think the devs should have increased their workload a bunch two years into the development cycle. 
Second theory, there will be an Overwatch 2 beta to coincide with the Overwatch League starting back up. Maybe as well they'll do like random key drops from watching streams on Twitch. So to me, this is very much the most likely option. I feel like updates can be split into two categories, appeals to existing players or brings in new ones, and a beta targets both nicely, which is ideal. The recent experimental card was wildly popular and many streamers hyped it up, but I feel like it mostly appealed to current Overwatch players and didn't do much for long-term popularity. So in that regard, I am hoping this call included attempts to bring in new or retired players. Third theory, Blizzard are going to do something like Fortnite's support a creator program where creators get paid each time a player buys something with their code. I feel like we'll get this at some point because it's of interest to content creators specifically and it's fairly obvious that the team wants to support us more. The only thing that really shoots this down for me is that most players are aware that Blizzard don't make a whole lot of money off Overwatch's current monetization system. This all brings me to my fourth theory of the game going free to play and then maybe getting a battle pass. I am super convinced this will happen when Overwatch 2 is released, but maybe Blizzard would do it earlier so there's more new players leading up to it. Uh, fifth theory is an in-game tournament and clan system. Again, this is something I thought we'd get with Overwatch 2, but after the success of the experimental card put together by content creators, maybe they're pushing it forward? My last theory is simply that Overwatch 2 is further along than we thought, or maybe Activision have applied more pressure to finish the game sooner. I think there's an above 0% chance of Overwatch 2 coming out in 2022, but it would probably be around Christmas time. And there we go, I just wanted to quickly give my thoughts and do one last video for the year. Thank you so much for watching, see you in 2022, and have a nice holiday!